Welcome, I'm Carol Ellis at the Brandywine River Museum of Art, and I'd like to introduce you to the Scaife Victorian Dollhouse, which will be on display throughout the holidays here at the museum. The Scaife Dollhouse, created around 1900, was in the collection of Sarah Cordelia Bellin Scaife, and was given to the museum by her son, Richard Scaife. The dollhouse is one of a series of dollhouses referred to as mystery houses because little is known of their origins. It presents a view of daily domestic life in turn of the century America with all of the objects made to scale and appropriate to the time period. It's thought that during the Victorian era, dollhouses were often used to educate girls in the decorating and furnishing of their own future homes. The Scaife Dollhouse contains nine rooms, a decorated foyer, an upstairs landing, and furnished exterior spaces. The elaborately decorated rooms reveal the cluttered interior of a Victorian home. They are filled with overstuffed furniture, screens, statues, wax flowers, paintings, and large potted plants. Most of the furniture and decorative items are original to the house as are all of the dolls but one. The installation of the dollhouse takes two members of the curatorial staff three or more hours to install. The contents of the dollhouse are in boxes brought to the display area from the vault. Inside each box, the tiny furnishings are in clear plastic containers in trays with numbered compartments. Using the inventory and photographs of previous installations, the curators select the items for each room. There's flexibility in choosing the decorative pieces as a collection contains many more items than can be installed in the house at one time. Since the dollhouse is displayed at the holidays, the selected contents reflect this time of year. When installing a room, the rugs, curtains, and paintings or wall decorations are placed first. Then items that appear in the back of the room are positioned and the installers work forward to the edge of the room. Lastly, the dolls take their places in each room. The finished living room contains three family dolls enjoying tea from a silver tea service accompanied by a plate of petty fours and a silver candy dish. It's an elegant room for entertaining with a music stand and violin nearby, suggesting a musical afternoon. The female dolls are dressed in Victorian finery. The living room has crown molding, an inlaid parquet floor with an oriental rug, and panels depicting fox hunting and various landscapes all typical of the Victorian era. The foyer is brightened by a lighted and decorated Christmas tree. Stockings hang on the newel posts and presents lie under the tree. Nearby are boxes of tiny glass ornaments. An umbrella stand and coat rack are ready for visitors. On the colorful red walls, a portrait of George Washington overlooks the scene. The dining room is prepared for a holiday feast. The table is set with silver place settings, goblets, and candelabra. Each china plate has a serving of turkey, potatoes, and vegetables, while serving dishes are filled with cranberry and vegetables. A carved turkey, a roast pig, and a plate of apples sit on the sideboard, while desserts of chocolate cake, plum pudding, and punch in a silver bowl await on the buffet. The kitchen is a busy place during the holidays. The table contains cookies cooling on a cookie sheet, freshly baked bread, a watermelon slice, vegetables, and various prepared dishes. A high chair sits beside the table. The standing brass shelves are stocked with assorted boxes and cans containing cereal and vegetables and a sack of flour. Next to the stove, a ham waits on the butcher's table while scales and a paper roll stand on a nearby table. Red towels decorate the sink. A basket of apples and pears and a box of oranges sit on the floor. 
A family cat is tucked up in a basket while two kittens play with a ball of yarn. Another household cat and dog wait before their empty bowls. Meanwhile, the cook stands at the door overseeing the busy scene. The bedroom is beautifully furnished with blue and white balances and curtains, which are repeated in panels around the room. Paintings adorn the walls. The bed is covered in a colorful quilt with a straw hat thrown across it. The circular table contains a fan, a ring holder, a candle, perfume bottle, and other accessories. Next to the bed is a washstand with a wash bowl and pitcher and cradle. The top of the large armoire holds a valise and hat boxes. On the floor are a bearskin rug and a calico cat. The upstairs hallway continues the red colors of the walls of the foyer. A large painting dominates the stairwell and an open trunk sits on the elaborate parquet floor with its oriental rug. A red and gold stand holds a lamp and telephone. Gold chairs stand against the wall next to an alcove with floor length red curtains and decorative tie backs. A table with a vase and flowers completes the alcove. The nursery is a child's delight with toys scattered about and every surface covered with them. The room is decorated in shades of pink with paintings on the wall, a pink child's bed, a pink cradle, and a pink screen and upholstered chair. The nursemaid and a child stand in the doorway. A dollhouse, castle, and toy bench sit on the floor beside a miniature train layout. Christmas stockings, a jack-in-the-box, and a doll cradle are nearby. On the changing table and desk are a bell jar, a teddy bear, a candy jar, and assorted toys. The bathroom is almost a luxurious spa with its chaise lounge, large bathtub, and beautiful vanity. Colorful wallpaper, full-length curtains, and a fluffy rug decorate the room. The sink holds a tiny soap container and a glass with a toothbrush and toothpaste. On the vanity are a comb, brush, and mirror, a wash bowl and pitcher, and perfume models on a gold tray. A newspaper on the chaise lounge and the cup and saucer on the side table indicate the bathroom is a quiet retreat. The attic bedroom is furnished with a canopy bed, dresser, and wing chair. On the floor is a small oriental rug. This room would probably be used by the housekeeper or the cook in the Victorian home. Its more expensive furnishings are not what would be found in the maid's or butler's rooms. The sewing room in the Victorian home is where new clothes could be sewn and where clothing and household items could be mended. A dressmaker's form, a coat rack, and a mirror stand next to a sewing machine and chair. Behind them is a rocking chair, a rack of various trims, and a thread box. The billiard room is dominated by the billiard table and the large sofa behind it. Bookcases and side tables contain a duck decoy and assorted items typically found in a room used by the men of the Victorian home and their visitors. The patio features a gold metal sofa, chairs, and table beside an evergreen tree. The area outside the kitchen has the children's tricycle and a rocking horse. A rabbit hutch stands to the side and a mailbox completes the scene. After all the rooms and outside areas are finished, there is one final step before the plexiglass walls are installed around the Scaife dollhouse, the placing of Santa Claus on the chimney. And now the Scaife Victorian dollhouse is ready to view and enjoy this holiday season.